Hi everybody. Um, so this is to walk you guys through your second essay assignment. This essay um, is looking at the modernist text that we read um, from the different movements that took place during uh, the, the war years. So there are many different um, connections, like I say, that you can make between these authors and these identities. So what I want you guys to do is choose two of the works that you read in this unit from two different authors. And I want you to compare and contrast them in terms of literary analysis. So you can choose works that seem to fit together naturally, or you can choose ones that are maybe not natural fits and compare them. Um, you're going to need to show how they are similar and different in terms of things like literary style or elements, historical context, and of course the biographical context. So just like your first essay, it's most important that this is a literary analysis essay. Um, it, you can bring in the historical context or the biographical context, but it should not become a history essay or a biography essay. So make sure that you are analyzing the literature as pieces of literature. So you should use the graphic organizer that you created to help you organize your thoughts. And you do have to have at least one credible source to support your analysis. So this could be a .edu site, it could be something like PBS, it could be um, really any credible source. Um, something like 123helpme.com is not going to be a credible source. Um, your essay needs to be two to three pages in length and is due by Sunday, February 11th at 11.59 p.m. So that means to the bottom of the second page at minimum. Um, remember that all essays are checked for plagiarism and make sure you write the proper length and um, MLA formatting and citation, of course. So you guys have read a, a lot of different works, poems, um, short stories from Frost, Fitzgerald, Hemingway, McKay, and Langston Hughes. So like I said, you can choose works that seem to naturally fit together. So for example, something like uh, Hemingway and Fitzgerald, Natural Companions, um, or you know Claude McKay and Fitzgerald talking about the ideas of isolation, whatever it might be. Um, or you can choose ones that don't necessarily on first glance seem to go together. So discuss and analyze those works in depth using your knowledge of the, the era and the biographical information to help contextualize those works. Uh, remember you are bringing in that literary terminology. So use the terminology that you learned of not only um, literary elements. So just like in the first essay, looking at characterization or conflict or imagery or plot or metaphors or similes or symbols. Um, but also think about structurally. So what is the terminology that you use when you are breaking down a poem? What is the terminology that you're using when you're looking at a piece of prose? Um, so bring that into your analysis as you compare and contrast these concepts. So as always, you'll need to get um, integrate a, a ample concrete evidence from the text. So quotes directly from both texts that show your audience what you're talking about and then carefully chosen support from credible sources in your analysis. So when you pull in the source material, uh, I'm sorry, the secondary sources into your uh, analysis, what you're doing is adding credible research that supports your claims as the author. So you're adding credibility to your own argument. So what you need to do is make sure that when you're using and citing these sources, it's the same way that you use and cite the primary source. So you'll be pulling in direct quotes from uh, whatever the source or sources may be and then you're going to make sure you cite them and you're utilizing that evidence to help uh, make your argument. Um, so for example if you are talking about say um, Babylon Revisited and you're talking about one of the characters and you pull a quote from I don't know a PBS or something like that make sure that you are citing that in text and using that to help show your audience what you're talking about. So some things you can think about as you write how do the works that you're analyzing connect in terms of theme or other major literary elements? Um, how are the structures similar or different? And how does that impact meaning or understanding on the part of the audience? So if again, if you're doing say Fitzgerald and a poem from Langston Hughes, how does the structure of a short story versus a poem and the way that Langston Hughes structures the rhyme scheme or whatever it might be, or how Fitzgerald uses dialogue, um, how does that influence meaning for the audience? Um, and then again, what historical biographical elements can be used, can be contextualized across these works? So um, again, for example, how does Fitzgerald's uh, post-war expat lifestyle 
Um, maybe that is a, a sense of isolation, and you could talk about Langston Hughes having that same sense of isolation for a character, one of his poems, something like that. Um, so how does uh, the, those differences and similarities between the authors and the historical situation impact the social, political, or economic framework around the works as well? Um, so you'll be assessed and making sure you have a fully developed um, introduction with a good, clear thesis claim, careful, close analysis of the works and their major concepts, um, good evidence from both the primary and the secondary sources, proper page length, MLA, proper use of, of sources and citations, and then again, as always, a fully developed essay structure. So that intro with a clear thesis claim, main ideas with um, solid evidence and analysis around that evidence, and a conclusion that restates your thesis and your main ideas in new words while wrapping up your argument. Um, and now this is a really important one. The way that you organize your argument is going to show the sort of um, complexity of your argument. So you want to organize this across thematic concepts rather than writing a section for each author. So what you don't want to do is after your introduction have a section on a Robert Frost poem and then a section on Fitzgerald's work and then another section on Robert Frost and then another section on Fitzgerald. Instead what you want to do is have a main idea, say for example, I don't even know, um, something like symbolism, right, utilized in Frost and Fitzgerald's work and then you're going to compare and contrast them across that idea of symbolism in that paragraph, pulling in those pieces of evidence and analysis to help support. Um, and then you'd move on to the second main idea and say it's, I don't know, uh, setting and why setting is important in both poems, I mean both pieces, both works. Um, then you'd have a compare and contrast between Frost and Fitzgerald's works across the concept of uh, setting. And then the third one could be something else like uh, metaphors or whatever it might be. Um, so that is really important. That's how you have a more advanced argumentative structure rather than having a paragraph per author. So again, as in the first essay, this is purposefully broad because I want you guys to choose the poems and the elements within the literary elements within the, I'm sorry, the works and the literary elements within those works that you find most engaging um, and most compelling so please let me know if you have any questions on this, but otherwise go ahead and move on.